what's going on guys welcome back to the x5 maintenance series hope you having a wonderful day today we have a 60 degree weather day in the middle of december which is unusual up here in the northeast that's truly amazing perfect conditions to be doing this type of work outside so so far we did the fuel filter replacement and the front diff service be sure to check those videos up here up on top somewhere now today we're going to be taking care of the suspension we're going to be replacing shocks on all four corners because the car has almost 100,000 miles and the suspension does feel a little bit floaty i decided to upgrade the suspension and improve the ride quality with this bilstein b6 suspension kit which is a quite an improvement over a stock setup now i'm not gonna get into details on the benefits in this video because this video is already going to be quite lengthy because this is quite an involved process so i'm going to make another video describing the benefits and what are the uh, advantages of going with this kit over the stock setup now with that being said we're going to start with the front before we lift the car up and take off the wheels we need to gain access to the strut towers right here which are covered by this cowl so we need to remove it and that's done by uh by removing some clips you could use tools like this and some 10 millimeter bolts along with some t25 uh, torque screws now on the right side i uh, need to remove the uh cabin filter assembly which is fairly simple there's a tab here that you just lift off and it should slide out and uh Next, we need to remove this piece, this cowl piece, because the uh, strut tower is right below this. So we have some T25 screws and a 10 millimeter here. And the piece should slide right out. And we have access to the top of the uh, strut tower. If you're doing this job without a lift, you know, obviously you need to get the front wheels off the ground. And the best way to do that, I mean, people know about, it's right here in the middle. There's a hidden uh, jack point on the F15, X, F16 cars. Right next, there's two bolts, one here and one on the opposite side of the jack. And in the middle, uh, it's it's uh, that's the place where you could place your jack and safety raise both sides at the same time which is very convenient now if you're wondering why your uh, brakes look different than mine well it's because i upgraded to the brakes and calipers from an x5m which are phenomenal by the way if you are interested check out the video on top here somewhere i'm gonna link it these are massive 396 millimeter rotors as you could see they're quite humongous look at my hand and the rotor and a four piston caliper now let's get back to uh, this assembly of the control arms the sway uh, bar end links etc and uh, getting the shock out now as you could see here better angle here this is the middle jack point right there and we have both sides of the ground the end link bolt is a 18 millimeter and you need a t40 torx to counter hold now before you go any further it's a good idea to disconnect the wheel speed sensor because uh the suspension is going to be hanging and you don't want any stress on that uh, there might be some dirt in it so you get a small screwdriver and just clean it out and then you could press the tab and it will come off right? next we need to remove this bolt, this pinch bolt to free up the top control arm. And we have a problem. Reason being is this side is not, oh, it is. Okay, you just have to loosen it up. Reason you might have a problem is if that side, side is not spinning is because the bolt has seized inside since this is aluminium and uh, this is steel so there's uh, oxidation happening corrosion over time so um 
So if the bolt is seized, you won't be able to slide it up. But fortunately, I was able to loosen it, and it does it does um, move. So that's that's a good thing. Might want to spray some penetrating oil on it as well. I'm gonna loosen it left and right. Although the bolt was spinning, it still would not back out because it was spinning kind of hard. So I had to apply heat with a torch. And uh, what you want to do is basically uh, you want to apply heat at an angle so you do not melt the, the top uh, ball joint uh, boot because then you have to replace the whole arm. And you want to heat it up and then spray it with oil and try moving it back and forth and eventually it will it will definitely come loose if you have an impact gun it's very helpful as well once the bolt is out easiest way to get the uh, ball joint out of the arm is to use an air hammer and then you could help yourself by placing a screwdriver to separate the uh, the pinch next we need to remove this 21 millimeter bolt down here that holds this bracket uh, that uh, pinches the uh, strut and then we have to remove this bolt right here you have power tools makes the job a whole lot easier and this on top here is an 18 millimeter before you get it loose all the way because there's some tension from the strut uh, I think the best thing to do is to uh, loosen the, the strut three 13 millimeter bolts right here and this way you have some oil there's no tension on it before loosening the uh, strut tower nuts you want to mark them uh, reason being the holes are slatted you want to reinstall it later in the same position because that will change your caster angle and you want to keep everything somewhat the same as it was before take a marker and just make a line also what you want to do is reattach your this uh, so it does not flop around while you try, try to take out the, uh, the strut so I attached it here reason being is was that will pull the uh, the CV axle all the way out you might have trouble reinserting it back in so you don't want to put stress on that and this still gives me enough room to compress it I have to keep compressing it and see there it is and we have the strut loose and I could just undo the bolt on top there it is with the shock out you want to place it something like a vise that will make your life a whole lot easier and uh, be careful because this is the most dangerous part of the whole process springs have killed people before and uh, you want to be extra careful you will need a spring compressor. I uh, actually rented this from uh, from Advance Auto. I use it plenty of times. They're they're good spring compressors, so you should not have a problem. Before you start compressing this, I just want you to notice something because this has a specific orientation which it needs to go back on in. As you can see there's some factory markings already made for you there, so you could see how the pad is in regards to the. To the shock also the hat has an uh, orientation as well so you want to take note of that and uh i emerged mark with my pen uh this was the outer two mounting points so you now when you put it back once you start compressing the spring make sure you do it evenly by interchanging from side to side like you see me do it in the footage um so that way your spring releases evenly on both sides and you could tell by um uh, they start to lift from the cup. Fun fact, stock shock take about 25 to 30 pounds to compress and um, B6 take about close to 70 pounds to compress if you have them on the floor like this and you try to compress them like that. This is not something I measured. I got that information online, but I, I believe it because you could feel it that you need much more force to compress this one opposed to that one. Obviously this is worn but uh, as you can see it comes up right away this one it does but it's very slow now that's not necessarily a bad thing some do uh, require external forces like for example spring to pu to put pressure to extend them so that doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad it's all 
based on the design, internal design of the actual shack. Before you reinstall everything, examine your strut mount because they might be needing replacements. Mine still look all right. There's no visible cracking or any loose parts. So I'm going to reuse them. Same thing with the bottom spring seat. Also be sure to inspect your bump stop. If there's damage, replace it. Mine was fine. Installation is fairly straightforward. You slide the top hat on, position the spring and slowly release side by side. All right, uh, we're done. We have the spring and the mount installed. The cool thing about the Belsteins is, is the bottom support is not, is actually movable. So even after the installation, if you need to turn it, you can. See, you could turn it where on the OE uh, one it's welded on. So uh, however you mount it, that's the position you gotta leave it in. And by the way, the torque spec on this is about 36 newton meters. But uh, honestly, with this design, it's hard to get a torque ratio in there. Here's a good example of why you need to pay attention how you mount this is because I'm holding the strut straight. As you could see, this is slanted this way. So that means this is the outboard uh, side, which if you install in the car, it will have the strut angled outwards. To get this lower fork reinstalled, um, you might have to spread this a little bit since the Belstein have paint on them and it's a little bit thicker. So it won't just go on, even though you are able to get this off without expanding this. So I have this piece of metal like so and this way you could just slide it back on now once you have the uh, fork in you want to support it with a jack from the bottom just so that everything is held in place but you just want to leave enough room so you could still move the top tower because your pressure won't be able to move it now it's a good time to tighten in the, the top mount which uh, which you want to align the same way as it as you removed it according to your uh, marks sorry for the background noise uh, my neighbor decided to blow some leaves just now with the top secured uh, now you can secure this, this pinch clamp over here what you want to do is raise your jack a little bit so this fully seats, uh, you'll know by um, this bell sign will kind of protrude uh, from the bottom here a little bit. That's how you know it's been uh, fully seated. And then you could make sure you don't forget this bracket. With these two secured, now we could take care of the top. We're almost there. Now I would highly advise to use some kind of anti-seize on uh, this here because this is aluminium and steel don't, uh, don't jive together over long periods of time. Alright boy that was a pain in the ass to put this back on as you saw it's hard to uh, Pull this up and then pull this down at the same time but uh managed now torque spec on this bolt is 56 newton meters so let me uh, get my torque wrench this is a 60 millimeter millimeter and i got 56 now this on about the sway bar end link that's 100 There we have it. Don't forget to uh, your wheel wheel speed sensor. Put this in in the bracket and place it in its respectable box. And with that being done, we have completed the assembly and a and replacement of the front strut. That's basically what's involved in replacing these uh, struts on the F15, F16 year models. It's similar on the E70 as well. Now I still have to do the other side, so I'm not gonna put this back in on this side as yet, but it, 
you got some of these in reverse order which if you could replace this you could definitely do the top cowl it's definitely one of the more labor intense procedures you will have to put some elbow grease into it but i promise you the rears which we're about to do next are literally walk in the park you could probably do it in an hour's time so be sure to check that video out and again thank you for watching hit a like subscribe comment down below and i'll catch you in the next video